You know, I see a lot of people talking about or writing articles about uh, how fast NVMe SSDs are becoming. And so, you know, as you probably already know, there's some uh, SSDs that are out there that can do more than uh, 14 gigs per second of read speeds and more than 13 gigs a second on write speeds. I don't know that it's that important for most people. So I thought I'd put it to the test. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the Crucial T705 Gen 5 drive that has DRAM. And we're gonna match that up against the Clevcraft C910 drive that is DRAMless. And as you can see, the price difference is pretty significant. It's like two and a half times less than the Crucial drive. For the test bench, we're going to be using the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X 3D for the CPU. The motherboard is the MSI X870E Carbon. The GPU is the RTX 5090. The RAM is the G-Skill Trident Z5 Royal 6000 CL28. CPU cooler is the Peerless Assassin 120SE. And the power supply is the Li and Li Edge 1300 watt. All right, so as you can see here, we're looking at uh, the PC start time to the login screen for Windows 11. And as you can see, from a percentage standpoint, it would seem like that there's a huge difference here, but the reality is, is less than four seconds of difference. Not a huge amount, but it is interesting to see the differences in things like this. For Cyberpunk 2077 at the Ultra preset, no scaling, no RT, no frame gen. As you can see here, we're going to look at the start time to the main menu, best load time for a save game, and the best load time for the benchmark tool to begin, right? And so to the start menu, we've got 57.83 seconds for the Crucial versus the clev at one minute two seconds again seems like from a percentage standpoint it would be significant but it's actually less than about five seconds right uh, and uh, the best time for loading up a save game we've got 9.10 seconds versus 9.51 seconds so next to no noticeable difference there uh, and the best time for the benchmark to load is 16.04 seconds for the Crucial. And actually the Clev drive beat it a little bit at 15.86 seconds. And as you can see, the Clev drive actually performed, uh, seemed to give a little bit of a boost, not a huge amount, maybe like, I don't know, 2%, one and a half percent of difference here uh, on the 1080p run. The 1440p run was pretty much neck and neck, as was the 4K run. And on the 1% lows at 1080p, probably about like a 2, 2.5% two of difference there. On 1080p at 1440p, we're looking at probably about 3%, maybe 2.5% of difference. And... Uh, pretty much neck and neck on 4K. All right, and Black Myth Wukong used the benchmark tools, so there's no save game to compare it to. The game's start time to the main menu for the Crucial Drive was 22.33 seconds versus a little bit faster on the Club Drive at 21.59 seconds. The best load time for the benchmark tool was 7.6 seconds for the Crucial Drive and for the Club Drive 7.5 four four seconds it's looking a little bit just a hair faster but not a lot not enough for you to notice all right looking at the average fps at 1080p 1440p and 4k we're pretty much tied across the board almost all of this all within a uh, run variance kind of thing which is kind of interesting considering that the Cleb drive, if you just go from a straight FPS standpoint on average FPS, is kind of edging out the crucial drive, right? But again, we're 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 just talking about run variance here, more likely than not. And going to the one percent lows, 
pretty much the same story as far as run variance goes. Not a huge amount of difference, not enough to take a closer look at other than maybe the 4K 1% lows. We're looking at what, 2.6 FPS of difference. So edging towards a 3% mark of difference, but not enough to really talk about. Next gaming benchmark is doing awakening using the benchmark tool at ultra preset, no scaling, no RT, no frame gen. Game start time to main menu for the crucial drive was 34.42 seconds, whereas for the club drive a little bit slower at 36.1 seconds. The best load time for the benchmark was 5.64 seconds for the crucial drive and 5.88 seconds for the club drive. So a little bit slower on the club side. And then for overall average FPS, again, not a lot of difference maybe some run variance and as you can see though again the club drive seems to do a little bit better than the crucial drive both on average fps and the one percent lows so that is interesting and then on monster hunter wilds we got a ultra preset no scaling no rt no frame gen uh, this is also the benchmark tool so no save games the start to main menu for the crucial drive 23.21 seconds versus the club drive at 26.6 seconds uh, best time to load up the benchmark was 9.3 seconds for the crucial drive and 9.69 seconds so similar to the last chart where the club drive is slightly slower and as you can see here we're still in run variance territory uh, which is kind of pretty much expected once you think about it for, for games. But I do find it interesting that sometimes the club drive in the same exact setup seems to afford a little bit more FPS. Uh, but this time, uh, it's the crucial drive that's slightly edging out the club drive, except for the 1% low on 1440p. And the last game we tested was Red Dead Redemption 2. Ultra presets, scaling's off, no RT, no frame gen. And the start to the title screen, which I'll throw up here just to be clear on the, what I mean when I say the title screen, we've got a load time of one minute, five seconds for the crucial drive and one minute, three seconds for the club drive. So a little bit faster, but not a lot. The best load time for a save game for the crucial drive was 24.87 seconds and for the cloud drive 24.77 seconds and the best time to start the benchmark tool was a minute five seconds for the crucial drive and a minute two seconds for the cloud drive and again using the cloud drive it seemed to slightly edge out the crucial drive and if you look in the average fps for at least the 1080p mark seems to edge it out a little bit and I got some chop on the 1080p 1% lows which resulted in 99.7 FPS at 1080p versus 116.7 so I thought that was kind of interesting another interesting thing was at 1440p the 1% low for the crucial drive setup was at 142.2 which which is really good considering that Overall average FPS was 161.2 and not a lot of difference between that one, the average FPS at 1440p uh, compared to the club drive at 159.1. But the 1% low was a pretty decent difference here at 127.5. And then at 4K, pretty much a, pretty much a tie at 4K. All right, then using Firmark 2.8.2.0, Oh, best load time for the benchmark to start was 5.81 seconds for the crucial drive and 5.96 seconds for the cloud drive. So the cloud drive is a little bit behind. But interestingly enough, at 1080p, we did 500.9 FPS average versus 592.1 FPS average. So that's actually a pretty decent and significant difference we're talking almost almost 20 percent of difference there so that was interesting i wonder if something was going on in the background here and if you look at the one percent lows for 1080p not a 
significant difference, but enough to talk about where we've got almost 21 FPS of difference here. And then at 1440p, pretty much neck and neck at 1440p for the average FPS. Uh, the 1440p for the Crucial Drive 1% lows did a decent chunk better than the Club Drive. And it also did a measurable difference at 1% low at 4K, whereas we're almost neck and neck for average FPS. This is the Blender version 4.4.0 and the best bench load time for the crucial drive was 5.71 seconds versus the club drive at 5.67 seconds so a little bit faster on the club drive but not enough to notice and as you can see here not a whole lot of difference except for maybe junk shop a little bit but that's still less than two percent of difference there and then for the gpu test We've got a bench load time of 6.1 seconds for the Crucial Drive and 6.01 seconds for the Club Drive. For these high of a number, these, these are just the differences between these two on Monster is negligible. Uh, same thing with Junk Shop and same thing with Classroom. So practically a tie here. And then on the Shotcut video editor for exporting a video, same video, with five filters, 20 minute long one and a five minute long one. If you look, we've got a decent amount of difference on the 20 minute export time of about 16 seconds. So over time, that crucial drive is gonna be a little bit more beneficial for longer form videos. On short form videos, not as much. We're talking a four second difference, so not a huge amount of difference there. Probably practically unnoticeable. Then using the 3D Mark storage benchmark and this is just to confirm the differences between the two SSDs outside of practical applications. So the Crucial T705 scored a 3938 which is a pretty good score as opposed to the Clev C910 which was pretty much almost half the score of the Crucial Drive. And then I use the AS SSD benchmark. This is the Crucial T705 results. Obviously this drive on this particular benchmark isn't quite living up to its expectations, considering that it can go up to 13600 on the read speed and almost but not quite there by about 10% on uh, the write speed. So we got about 30% more that we go on the read speed, about 10% more, maybe about closer to 11 or 12% more that we could go on on the write speed as far as its max ability for the read write for that drive. And honestly, I don't know how, I think this is in German, and I'm not sure how I managed to do that. I tried to change the, the language, but it, it wouldn't let me, or at least I couldn't understand how I could do it. So anyways, what matters is right here. So on this benchmark for the Clev drive, we're probably missing about, about 15 to 20% of write speed from its max capacity. On the write speed though, it's pretty close. I think it's 4,800 was uh, its max speed. Again, this and the previous benchmark for 3D Mark was just to show the differences in the two drives so that you understand that in in games, we're, we're talking about something different here. And then finally, the PC Mark 10, which does kind of like a fairly thorough workload uh, in multiple applications for the drive. This is the result for the Crucial Drive, and we ended up with a score of 95.49. But interestingly enough, the Club Drive outscored it at 97.01, which I found interesting that it slightly outscores the Crucial Drive, which makes me wonder if during this process, the crucial drive was somehow throttling back under the same exact conditions. Maybe it was heating up too much, but they were both using the same heat sink. So not sure what else to make of this, but it does kind of make you wonder 
if the games that we tested out is more accurate to the two comparisons than the other two synthetic benchmarks, the AS SSD and the 3D Mark benchmarks. All right, so what does all that information tell us? Well, it tells us that relative to the results and the price points that we're looking at, and I'll throw those up as I'm talking here, it's not important, right? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter, at least for these two models in comparison for each other in most things. Just like I was thinking, unless you're doing a lot of file transfers and things like that, uh, where your workloads require that, uh, there's, you're, you're actually kind of throwing your money away. When you compare the, the price points, at least the price points that I found at the time I ran these benchmarks, you, you're looking at like two and a half times the price difference between the T705 and the Clev drive. And I suspect that we'd run into similar issues when it comes to other drives that we're making comparisons to, right? Now, how long they last and how many read writes they can do uh, from a cycling standpoint over time, that might make a difference. Uh, but the two types of SSDs, whether you've got DRAM or no DRAM on it, isn't making a lot of difference. And it's not making a, a lot of difference from a practical usage standpoint for most people. So in the end, I think uh, you find more value over time in looking at your more cost-effective drives, at least at this point with the way uh, PCIe 5 versus PCIe 4 and DRAM versus DRAMless, uh, you're not seeing a lot of difference here, right? If you feel different, then uh, feel free to tell me down in the comments or if you uh, find other results that contradict what I, what I found, you know, I'd be more than happy to take a look at that stuff. You know, this wouldn't be the first or last time that I, I was proven wrong. And so um, I'm not opposed to debate on the subject. But from what I'm finding, yeah, uh, it's, it's really not worth the price of higher speed SSDs if you're not going to benefit from spending that extra amount of money. Let me know what you think in, in the comments and let me know what drives you're, you're using. Are, are you using NVMEs? Uh, are you using the older school SATA SSDs? Are you still using HDDs, which there's nothing wrong with that, especially from a storage standpoint? Just let me know down in the comments and if you like the information I provided, uh, please hit that like and subscribe down at the bottom. It does help out the channel a ton. In the meantime, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one.